Final speaker today is uh, Brendan Harmon with North Carolina State University and is going to be talking about tangible geospatial modeling for landscape architecture. And let's see, did you have a video? Is that, um, uh, do you know where you are here? Let's see. Yeah, why don't we, I'll let you find it. Yeah, great. There we go. All right, hi, um, my name's Brendan Harmon. Uh, I'm at North Carolina State University and my collaborators are Helena Matosheva and Anna Petrosheva. Um, and I'm gonna talk about tangible geospatial modeling for landscape architects today. So um, there's uh, traditionally in, desi in design and landscape architecture especially, we use um, very intuitive methods like um, sketching, clay model making, contour models to explore our design ideas. Um, however, in digital design, in GIS or CAD and 3D modeling, um, there's this uh, disjunction between the physical and virtual where um, you're trying to interact with a computer and um, it's very hard to get your conceptual design ideas across and get them to analysis. So what we're using here is um, a, um, our tangible GIS system um, <coughs> connects um, 3D scanning. Uh, well, first of all, sculpting landform, sculpting a physical model uh, in, a, in a cycle with um, then 3D scanning um, into a GIS. We run geospatial analyses on it, and then we project them back onto the model, uh, creating um, a really intuitive feedback cycle. So it's uh, coupling a physical model with a virtual model. Um, it, here we're using a physical model that's made of polymeric sand, and um, we're uh, scanning it in with a Kinect uh, scanner, um, <coughs> and um, we're running a... Um, <coughs> a flow accumulation simulation on it, um, and we're creating different change scenarios. And in near real time, um, it's updating the uh, flow accumulation model and um, with a new digital elevation model and um, showing the changes. Um, so we're using this in several ways. Um, what you'll see next is um, an a grading, we're using it for grading to teach uh, young landscape architecture students how um, about the three-dimensional form of topography. So we have the existing uh, digital elevation model projected here with the contours on a flat um, surface. And then um, um, people are gonna interactively and collaboratively build up the landform and try and create the existing surface. We're gonna project, um, we're gonna, as it's scanned in, we're gonna run a difference um, model and show how different from the, um, uh, from the real, from the digital elevation model, the sand model is right now. So they can get a sense of how they need to um, uh, change the sand model to build the existing conditions. They can, um, start to learn more intuitively about um, what contours mean and the three-dimensional shape of the land. Um, they'll see where they've made mistakes, where they failed to understand what the contours mean, and start to um, learn about the landform. Uh, so um, uh, we also then can run the simulations on it and show them uh, what the landscape they've made um, means. and. Uh, uh, what sort of physical processes it has. Um, we've been uh, experimenting with um, rapidly prototyped base models. Um, so we're also using 3D printing and computer numeric controlled routing and milling to um, uh, generate very high resolution, uh, very accurate models. Um, and then we can build um, uh, polymeric sand models um, on top of that uh, to allow a, a very interactive surface that's uh, accurate. Um, here's a, uh, um, a hydrology simulation. That's, uh, 
so here's a 3D printed model with um, a water flow uh, simulation on it. Um, the next um, the next segment will be um, um, uh, about scenarios where we've. Uh, um, it's a scenario for flooding um, and storm surge on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So here we have um, the Jockeys Ridge State Park uh, with its um, sand dunes, uh, where first the first uh, uh, in flight occurred, um, and uh, we've uh, built. We have a CNC routed model underneath, and we've um, used a mold to press the sand into the. Uh, to create the uh, the surface, the CNC routed model represents the uh, the core surface, the part of the dune that stayed stable over the last thirty some years, and the um, the sand is the active surface. Um, now we're um, sculpting the uh, the sand surface to create different change scenarios, um, and um, then it will be uh, then we'll run some uh, uh, flooding uh, models on it. And show what can happen with um, uh, sea level rise, storm surge. Um, the Outer Banks are um, have been hit hard by hurricanes and uh, are at great risk from sea level rise. Um, and uh, we've also got to um, run a fire model on um, Jockey's Ridge. And. Um, so uh, to conclude, I wanted to talk a little bit about generative design, uh, a slightly different idea. Um, it's a, um, um, a cycle of, first of all, ideation or uh, conceptualization, then um, form generation, um, then analysis, and um, finally critical refinement, and then again to reconceptualization. Um, uh, this is generally thought of as um, being the sort of um, conceptual design process used in procedural and parametric modeling. Um, however, I think that in a, with something like this, with a, a tangible geospatial model, you can, um, it's a great example of it where you can do conceptual design with really rigorous scientific analysis at the same time. And so rather than going through the conceptual design process using intuitive methods, um, and then setting your design course without rigorous um, analysis, and only getting to the analysis once you're too far into the design uh, to, uh, to, well, uh, go back to conceptual design again. This allows you um, to have the analysis at the beginning of the process. <laughs>